In 2013, a horror movie released that would spawn not only sequels and spin-offs, but a whole universe, The Conjuring, directed by James Wan. The Conjuring released to very positive reviews and box office success, raking in over $300 million on a budget of $20 million. And after seeing the success of the MCU, New Line Cinemas, Atomic Monster, and Warner Brothers saw an opportunity to capitalize on the hype by bringing audiences a horror cinematic universe, using The Conjuring as the base. And thus, The Conjuring Universe was born, a series of horror movies all focusing on paranormal entities and demons, all taking place in a shared world. As of 2021, all eight movies have grossed over two billion dollars and considering how cheap these movies are to make and with each one pulling in hundreds of millions needless to say the universe is a success at least financially the quality of these movies vary drastically and i want to go ahead and review each one in order of release and then at the end i'm going to rank them so sit back relax and let's talk about the conjuring universe The Conjuring, the film that started it all. Released in 2013, directed by James Wan, it follows the story of Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are demonologists and paranormal investigators, as they help a family who is being haunted and tormented by a demonic entity. It's loosely based on the real-life case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren, but I'm not going to get into how real or accurate it is. I'm just looking at it as a movie. So it's a very simple setup, but it's all about the execution. And back when this movie came out, it was a breath of fresh air to the genre. Not in the sense that it was a brand new groundbreaking idea, but it was an actual well-done, well-acted, big-budget studio horror movie. In a subgenre of horror that was was pretty crowded, and it cut through all the crap that was being released around this time by not feeling cheap or low budget. It had very good sets and effects, as well as some very good performances. And not to mention, the scares were genuinely pretty creative and effective. It didn't rely on false jump scares and loud noises, and when there were loud noises and jump scares, it was something that was supposed to be scary and not a fake out scare. The Conjuring pulled from haunted house movies from the 70s and 80s and refined them into a very solid experience. It has this aesthetic that makes it feel like it's a movie that was made during that time, like the way the text crawls across the screen in the beginning, or these long shots of the camera so zooming in on something far away in the distance. And not to mention, the music. It feels like James Wan was taking things he learned from watching these movies from the 70s and combined them into a movie that feels very much in the spirit of those classics. But of course, Wan does put his own twist on things. Along with using old school techniques, he also does things that he's known for. That being the camera work and the various unique shots and angles you get, as well as these continuous shots that he loves to do. You can tell that a lot of time and care went into the filmmaking, making it a very well made movie that really blew the competition out of the water at the time. So without a doubt from a technical aspect, it's a really well made movie. And holds up very well eight years later. And the pacing here is pretty good. There's always a moment where something is happening, and it's either there to build towards a creepy event or to move the story along. Time doesn't feel wasted. But what really sets movies apart is how it handles its scares. Not only are many of them very unique and creative, but more importantly, they build tension leading up to them. The scares just don't happen out of nowhere. They build towards each one to make you feel uncomfortable the whole time while watching. The goal is to make you feel anxious while you watch and to keep you on the edge of your seat, which is what this movie does a lot, and it's very effective. Something else that's a really small touch that adds to the creep factor are the real images of the family that play during the credits. It adds that extra layer of uneasiness. So the scares are good, it's very well made, but what really brings it together are the actors. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, as Ed and Lorraine Warren, are the standouts. They are so great on screen together and very likable. They are very convincing as a married couple, and their performances are top-notch, and are easily the best characters not only in this movie, but the whole Conjuring universe. And the mother was also great. We see her get beaten down and broken to eventually possess throughout the movie, and she did a really great job. Now this brings me to the movie's only weak points in my opinion, and that's the side characters. They're pretty much all boring. Everyone is serviceable, but it's a big cast, and no one stands out besides the Warrens and the mother. Like, I couldn't tell you any of the daughters' names. But I will give credit, as far as child actors go, they're all pretty good. Also, the only other small complaint I have is that there are some pretty awkward lines here and there, and they are mainly from the younger daughters. And there's also a few times where they try to use slang from that era, and it comes across as kind of weird and forced. But other than that, this is a very good movie. Hell, I would even say great. And I gotta confess, this was the movie that made me really love James Wan as a filmmaker. I already liked his previous work like Saw, Insidious, and Hell. I even found Dead Silence and Death Sentence enjoyable. But this was the movie that made me go, okay, this is the guy. He really honed his skills as a director, and with each movie he got better and better. And this was the movie that put him on my personal list of favorite directors. Hell, I liked him so much that I saw Furious 7, not because I cared about the Fast and Furious movies, but because I heard he was directing, and I wanted to see how he tackled an action-packed summer blockbuster. Spoiler alert, he fucking killed it. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I could talk about this guy in his movies for hours. So The Conjuring was a success, receiving praise from audiences and critics, and was a huge box office hit. And as you know, if something is a hit in Hollywood, they gotta capitalize on it, for better or for worse.
After the success of The Conjuring, Warner Brothers New Line Cinema wanted to follow up on it, and what better way to do that than a spinoff. Annabelle was a doll that was featured in The Conjuring for a few scenes, and was very popular amongst fans because it was creepy as hell. So a whole movie was planned to release with the doll as the focus. This was a pretty interesting decision because how could you make a whole movie about a doll that attracts demons? The doll itself doesn't really do anything. Short answer, they couldn't. In The Conjuring, the doll was used in the beginning as a way to introduce the Warrens, and show you what they do, and for a scare sequence later on. And she worked there because it was very short and to the point. Trying to build a 90 minute movie around the doll was going to be tricky, and they really couldn't pull it off. This movie felt like what many feared after seeing the trailer. A cash in. A way to make money on something popular. Well it's Hollywood for you isn't it? And this movie made some money. 250 million dollars on a 6.5 million dollar budget? I call that a good investment. Okay so enough chit chat, let's talk about the movie. So this takes place before the events of The Conjuring, and the focus this time around is on a couple, John and Mia. They're expecting a baby soon, and after they are attacked by some cult members, the wife Mia starts experiencing some strange paranormal occurrences. And it turns out the cultists have called forth a demon, and has attached itself to the Annabelle doll, and it wants a soul. So what follows is a series of strange hauntings, and the wife and husband must find out how to stop this thing. The nicest thing I can say about this movie is that there are some pretty cool looking shots, and that's probably because the director in this movie was the cinematographer for The Conjuring, so he knows how to set up some pretty interesting shots. But that's about it. The movie doesn't have many redeeming qualities. It's 15 minutes shorter than The Conjuring, but feels 30 minutes longer. How do you pull that off? I'll tell you how. Boring, uninteresting characters, a slow story that lacks a hook to get you invested, and scares that lack any tension. The drop in quality gave me whiplash going from The Conjuring to this. It's pretty jarring. Now as for the scares themselves, they're all loud noises from the soundtrack, then a jump scare. But sometimes there's nothing on screen that's supposed to be scary. It's just a loud noise that's supposed to startle you. There are a handful of interesting setups, but they're usually ruined by the obnoxious soundtrack. There are several times that having no music would have been more effective. They also do these slow zoom-ins on the Annabelle doll throughout the movie, and it leads to nothing. They just do it. It stops becoming interesting after the first time. I think the best sequence was towards the end, when the mother is in the basement. She's trying to run away, but the elevator keeps opening on the same floor. So she has to run up the stairs, and it's pretty pretty neat, even though there's lightning flashing, but there's no windows so that's kinda funny. This movie is really just filled with uninteresting characters, and an uninteresting story, with some uninteresting scares. It's a very safe movie, it doesn't do anything unique, and instead goes, yeah here's that doll you like, here's a loud noise, here's a reference to the Warrens, and for most of the runtime, not a whole lot happens. It's not until the last 20 minutes where things actually start to get interesting, but by then the movie is ending. It's a very underwhelming experience. It's exactly what people thought it was gonna be, a shallow cash in, that was quickly thrown together and rushed out. What's funny is, there's this behind the scenes video on YouTube that cover all the Conjuring movies. And when they get to Annabelle, they just talk about it for a minute before moving on. It's like they want to forget about it too. I wasn't expecting a movie on the same level as The Conjuring, but I was expecting something at least good or decent. So the first Conjuring spinoff wasn't well received, getting some of the worst ratings in the whole Conjuring universe. And I can't say it's not well deserved. This was really an interesting movie, and it felt like a waste of time. And we're back, baby. After the crap that was Annabelle, James Wan returned to give us the third entry into the Conjuring universe, The Conjuring 2. And this is a perfect way to cleanse yourself after seeing the previous entry. Released in 2016, the concept is basically the same as the first Conjuring movie. A family is being haunted and the Warrens are the Ghostbusters there to help. Except this time it's overseas in England, and there is a slight twist. People aren't too sure if the hauntings are legit, or if the family is making it up for fame. And to add to this, Lorraine's psychic abilities allow her to tap into the paranormal world aren't picking up anything, so there's some doubt from people involved in the investigation. But the Warrens know it doesn't feel right so they stick around to get to the bottom of it. And on top of that, Lorraine sees Ed's death as well as this demonic entity that is haunting both of them. So there's more focus on their personal life and we get to see and learn more about their characters. It really fleshes them out and makes them even more likable. Also on a side note, I really like this intro section. Just like the first, it's the Warrens working on a different case. I mean here it's actually the Amityville case, which is already really cool. But in this sequence we see how Lorraine's powers work. It's really great and I like it more than the Annabelle intro from the first. But anyway, this movie has a bit more going on. It has more plot points and story threads, more characters, the final showdown and the ending is is much bigger. There are more scares, more creative sequences, more character moments for Ed and Lorraine. I think it balances all pretty well, and it all feeds into the main story, which is stopping this demon who is haunting the family. Also, you get a lot of scares here, and they hit you with one right after another. It sets one up, and then not long after, it does another one. But this movie is also a little bit longer, so it has more time to do that. It's a little over two hours, and they fill that time with a lot of creative sequences. It's like James Wan went all out and tried to think of every way he could to scare people. Although, I'm not gonna lie, there are a few scares that you've seen before, but executed a bit differently here. And there's a few times where you'll know something will pop out of a dark corner, but there's also several times where it subverts your expectations. It'll build towards a scare and you think you know where it's going to come from, but instead it goes, actually, the scare is over here. He did that in the previous Conjuring movie as well, but it's used a lot more here. And from the filmmaking standpoint, it's just as good as before, with creative camera work and nice blend of practical and special effects. Again, it's a very good looking movie, it doesn't look cheap at all. The sets look good and so do the effects, and the acting all around was good. Ed and Lorraine Warren are played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga again, and they're just great. They work incredibly well together, and I was very much invested in their journey. And all the side characters are good too, although this 
standout character was Janet. She's the girl that the holdings are happening to the most, and she's fantastic. Which is great, because if she wasn't good, then I probably wouldn't be nearly as invested in this movie as I was. Another side note, just like the first movie, during the end credits you see the real family that was haunted, but to make things even more creepy, they actually have actual audio from the investigation. It was just a really nice touch. I really don't have many complaints. I guess I could say that you could have cut out a few scares to save about 5-10 to 10 minutes, because it does drag a little bit towards the end, but that's about it. I feel like the idea here was to try to do things bigger, and get more creative, and I think they succeeded. I enjoyed this movie a lot, and it was a great follow-up to the first. So, even after poor reviews, they decided to give Annabelle another go. But this time, they did something that greatly benefited the movie. They actually put time, care, and money into it. I tell him this time was David F. Sandberg, who the year prior directed Lights Out. After his directorial debut, he was approached to do Annabelle Creation, and I gotta say, he did a great job. This movie surprised a lot of people, myself included, because we all went in expecting to hate it, but instead we were greeted to a pretty solid horror experience. I think the fact that people had low expectations really benefited this movie. It's crazy, it's like if you put time and care into it, you get a better product. This is a very solid movie, and a huge step over the first. It actually has the same writer from the previous one, but the story this time around is much more interesting, and some of the main characters aren't complete stumps of wood. So the story goes, these orphan girls move into this house owned by this married couple, who want to do some good and give back. But not long after arriving, one of the girls finds the Annabelle doll, and creepy shit starts to happen, mainly to her. And along the way, we uncover the mystery behind the married couple, as well as the origins of the doll. So the premise is simple, but let's be honest, most of the movies have the same very basic setup. Only things that really change are the time period and location. But I found some of the scares and tension building to be very effective, and unlike the first Annabelle, it knew when there should be a loud audible sound cue, and when there should be silence. There are some really good sections and sequences here. Also the main little girls, the ones who are getting tormented by a doll the most, were good for the most part. And Sister Charlotte? Oh man, Sister Charlotte. She's looking fine as hell. I mean, she was also pretty decent. The other girls aren't really memorable, and for the first half of this movie, it is pretty slow, with all the cooler shit happening in the second half. But as it stands, it is still pretty good. It also ties itself back into the first Annabelle, and it didn't need to do that. I'm okay with pretending that it doesn't exist. But it does tie itself back into the first Annabelle in the last five minutes, and I thought it did a pretty good job at it. So overall, this movie surprised me. I went in with very low expectations, but I ended up walking away very pleased. And it also put David F. Sandberg on my radar. He took the concept of the Annabelle doll and actually made it work pretty well. And after seeing Lights Out and this movie, I'm definitely looking forward to his next horror film. So yeah, I enjoyed it. So after the success of The Conjuring 2, and how popular The Nun got because of that movie, similar to Annabelle, a film was planned around this character, and just like Annabelle, it sucked. When I first saw the trailer, I thought this movie was unnecessary, and after seeing it, I realized I was right. Basically a nun commits suicide, and the Vatican sends a priest and a nun to go investigate the incident, and to see if the land is still holy. Of course when they get there, there's a demonic entity on the loose, and it's taking the appearance of a nun. And you know, paranormal shit starts to happen. And along the way, you learn the history about this castle where all the nuns live, and a priest and a nun and a local named Frenchie must work together to conceal this demon. And like I already said, I feel like this movie is unnecessary and doesn't need to exist. It's just here to kinda explain where the demon came from in The Conjuring 2, and to tie into The Conjuring 1 with having Frenchie. Remember the guy who was getting exercised at the beginning of The Conjuring? This is him 20 years earlier. Is it important? Not really. It just kinda gives you information that I don't feel is needed. Now even though I wasn't looking forward to it, I think this movie could have been something at least interesting, because they had a decent budget, and they even went to a castle in Romania to film, giving it a really cool location and look. But unfortunately the story was boring, the characters were uninteresting, and the scares were shallow. I mean, for example, this movie does this one trick you see in a lot of horror movies nowadays. The character will look one way, then they look the opposite way, and then there will be something behind them that wasn't there before. It's a neat trick, but it's so overused, and they do it a fair amount. And some of these scares become very predictable. You'll know when something will pop out, because you've already seen it. It doesn't bring anything new to the table, and it doesn't even really try to subvert your expectations. Not to mention, there's some weird humor added in here, mainly with this character, Frenchie. It's not funny, for one, and two, it takes away from whatever scare they're trying to pull off. Now, despite the negative reviews, it made a lot of money. It's actually the highest grossing Conjuring universe film, which is insane considering how bland it is. I guess that shows just how popular the nun character was, and just how interested people were in seeing a movie around them. This is easily one of the most boring horror movies I've seen in recent memory. And it's a shame because this one probably could have been good. It had the budget, it had the location, it even had James Wan involvement with coming up with the story, but it needed better well-crafted scares and more interesting characters. As it is, it's a very big missed opportunity to expand upon a very popular character in a meaningful way. Now, speaking of boring horror movies, The Curse of La Llorona. This is technically part of the Conjuring universe, but unlike the previous entries, it focuses on a paranormal entity that wasn't featured in the two main Conjuring movies, and instead relies on the old folklore and urban legend of La Llorona, or the Weeping Lady, as she's also been called. By the way, I'm really sorry for how I'm pronouncing the name. So the way they tie it into the Conjuring universe is by bringing in a character from the first Annabelle, this guy, the priest who tried helping the couple in that film. Other than that, it's basically its own thing. Now, this one is actually a very disappointing one for me. Unlike the nun, I was actually looking forward to it, because the story that we 
Sleeping Lady is very interesting, and seeing parts of that story on screen would have been cool as hell. But unfortunately, they fumbled it, and the movie just came out bland, boring, and disappointing. Now, I think the setup is pretty good. You get a decent intro, and having the main character be a social worker, and having that connection with children, as well as a single mother or two, I think could have benefited the story very well. So, the first 10 to 15 minutes, I think is pretty fine. It's just everything else is the issue. For starters, you could literally change La La Rona out with any other ghost, and the story is basically the same. Outside of the intro where you see her drowning her kids, there's nothing really unique about her. She acts like just any other ghost. And it's after the first 20 minutes where the movie starts to go from small scare sequence to small scare sequence. And I admit some of them are pretty cool, but others not so much. And then there's a weird tone shift that comes out of nowhere for the last 20 minutes. The humor here is almost as bad as the nuns. You know what, it actually might be worse. So it had a good setup and an interesting folklore they could really pull from and use, but they went a really safe and boring route. And it's unfortunate because this could have been the movie to really break away and start being different from the others in the franchise, but it didn't. Instead what you get is a boring antagonist that could be switched out with any other ghost, predictable scares, and some really awkward humor that messes up the tone of the whole movie. Overall very disappointing and boring. Annabelle Comes Home, the seventh Conjuring Universe entry, and third Annabelle movie. Isn't it crazy they made a trilogy about this damn doll? The director this time around was Gary Doberman, who wrote the first two Annabelle movies, as well as The Nun, and this was his directorial debut. So the idea is that the Warrens have to go on an investigation or work on a case, or to do some lectures, something like that, don't really remember. Anyway, they gotta leave the house. So they hire a babysitter to watch their daughter. Then the babysitter's friend comes over, and unintentionally lets the Annabelle doll loose. So now, several items in the room full of paranormal spooky ghost shit starts getting triggered and going off, terrorizing the girls. Now remember in the previous section where I said the curse of La Llorona hits a point where it's just a series of small scares one after another? Well Annabelle Comes Home is basically that but longer. After the Annabelle doll gets loose, all the cursed items start taking turns scaring the girls. And that's what most of this movie is, a series of unconnected scare sequences. Although I will give the movie credit, I think a lot of these sequences are better and more creative than the ones in Curse of La Llorona, but they all kind of play out the same. It goes something like this. The person walks into a room. Something grabs their attention. They look. There's nothing. But then something else grabs their attention. They look. Nothing. And then and finally, a big scare. Usually it's a demon or a ghost face. That's the basic structure of all these sequences. And after the first two, you begin to notice it, making them feel predictable. I think on their own, these sections are pretty neat, albeit a little predictable. And I think if you watch them on your own, like in a YouTube video, then they are pretty fun. But when they're actually in the movie, it's just one after another and becomes really repetitive. What it feels like is they constructed these sequences first and then loosely tied them together with a story. Speaking of loosely tied in, there's this neighbor boy that the babysitter has a crush on, and he just pops in a movie for a few times, and his character doesn't add anything. He's really just here so that the werewolf has someone to chase outside. He'll pop in, do one thing, then leave. I just think it's funny that his character feels like such an afterthought. You could cut him out and the movie is literally the same. Now surprisingly, I don't hate this movie. For how much I've been bitching about it, you think I would, but I don't. And that's for one reason. This movie was made to have fun. It doesn't take itself as serious as the previous Annabelle movies, or any other of the Conjuring Universe movies. In behind the scene interviews with James Wan, he basically said, yeah, we're having fun with it this time. The most fun that I have on working on this film is just sort of spitballing ideas with Gary. You know, it's the third one in a series, we gotta have fun. So the approach this time was a little different, and the movie overall has a more upbeat feel to it. Now I understand that a lot of people won't like that, but for me personally, really thinking about it, I greatly prefer this approach this time around, rather than them try to play all this stuff super serious. Because if it were more serious, then it won't be nearly as entertaining, and would come across as much dumber. So the result is just a series of sequences that they were just throwing out there, trying to do as many as possible and have fun with it. Of course the downside is because there are so many and they share the same structure, they don't feel very much connected and become predictable. If anything, they should have left the best ones in and cut out several of them to save on time and to move the story along. Now the characters for the most part aren't anything special. The little girl who plays the Warren's daughter is pretty good, and of course the Warrens themselves are great as usual. Their presence alone really elevates the movie for me. If they weren't in it, I probably wouldn't like it as much. The other characters like the babysitter and her friend aren't that special. Same goes for the neighbor boy. It's a very small cast of characters, but none of them stood out except for the Warrens. And I don't think any of them were that bad. They're serviceable at best, and I just didn't care for any of them. So overall, I didn't hate this movie. And I do appreciate that I was going for a more upbeat and not a serious approach, and just having fun with all these different types of hauntings. So not bad, but not that great. There is some fun to be had here. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, I actually already made a review for this back when it originally came out a few months ago. So if you want to see my full thoughts, you can go ahead and just watch that. Because I'm going to be pretty brief here. After re-watching it, my thoughts haven't really changed. So unlike the first two Conjuring films, this one was not directed by James Wan. Instead, it was directed by Michael Chaves, who right before this directed The Curse of La Llorona, which was his directorial debut, making this his second full-length horror film. And I'm going to be honest, when I first heard he was directing, I was a little nervous, because I was not impressed with Curse of La Llorona and found it very disappointing. But I will say, this film is much better than 
as previous. Although it's not on the same level as the first two Conjuring films, which is a pretty high bar to reach, and if I'm being honest, I didn't expect it to be nearly as good as the first two. I just wanted it to be much better than The Curse of La Llorona, and I think it was. So the movie revolves around the very famous The Devil Made Me Do It case, where Arnie Johnson killed someone, and he pleaded not guilty by reason of demonic possession. And so the Warrens come in and start investigating to try to help him plead his case. So right off the gate, it is a change up from the first two films. Instead of going to a house and the family's being terrorized, they instead travel around trying to find answers. And overall, I think the movie is just fine. There are several really cool sequences that kind of bend and warp reality, like when Lorraine uses her powers. And there's some pretty good camera work, but the movie lacks a lot of tension and creative scares. And I actually didn't mind a different approach to the story. Instead of going to a house, they're actually traveling around and investigating. I found it to be a pretty nice change up. Although I think the antagonist in this one, the witch who placed the curse, is not really that interesting. There wasn't as much lore or backstory to the witch, and just made her feel like a stock generic villain. Which is a shame because a good portion of this movie is trying to locate the witch. And since I don't find her interesting, I don't really care. Although something I really did like is that the film pays homage to older horror films. Like when the priest arrives, the shot looks very similar to The Exorcist. And then towards the end of the movie, Ed has a limp wearing a jacket and wielding a sledgehammer, and then gets manipulated into trying to kill Lorraine. Very reminiscent of The Shining. This was a nice little detail I thought was kind of cool. And of course the biggest bright spot in the whole movie is Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine Warren. But this should come as no surprise. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I think they're the best characters in the whole Conjuring universe. And honestly, if this wasn't a Conjuring film and didn't have the Warrens in it, I don't think the movie would work as well as it does. They really help elevate it, and their characters are really what keep you intrigued. So overall, I think it's a pretty above average horror movie with two really good leads that really carry the whole film. With some pretty decent camera work, some cool looking visuals, and a few pretty decent sequences. But it's very lacking in the scares, and I found the main story and antagonist really start to lose my interest towards the end. Overall, it's just alright. And those are my thoughts on the Conjuring Universe films. I reviewed them all in order of release, now it's time to rank them from worst to best. At number 8, the absolute worst one is Annabelle. Yes, I know, you're all just shocked right now. Shit was a shameless, boring cash-in, and I recommend that no one watch it. Up next is The Nun, probably the most unnecessary film. This movie really did not need to exist, completely unnecessary and just here to cash in on a very popular character. I also recommend that no one watch this film. Up next is The Curse of La Llorona, easily the most disappointing film in this universe. It doesn't take advantage of the folklore or legend of La Llorona, and instead could be replaced with any other ghost. I think it has a very decent setup, and a few pretty cool creative sequences. But that's about it. The nicest thing I can say is that I enjoyed it more than Annabelle and The Nun, but overall, very disappointing. Up next is Annabelle Comes Home. I really appreciate the less serious approach and how they decided just to have fun with it. I think a few of the sequences are really cool, even though they don't really feel connected to each other. But honestly, unlike the last three we just listed, I actually wouldn't mind watching this one again. This is one I can have fun with, even if it's not really that scary. Next up, The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. Easily the weakest in the mainline Conjuring movies, but I don't think it's completely terrible. There are some pretty cool visuals, and I like the camera work. But of course, I think the whole movie is held up because of Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. They're great and they're really what kept me invested. And compared to Michael Che's previous film, this is a pretty big improvement. Then we got Annabelle Creation. Movie surprised the hell out of me. I didn't expect to like it, but I think David S. Sandberg did a really good job with this one. Some really creepy and unsettling scares here, and some pretty decent child actors. I really enjoyed this one. Now I flip flop between these last two for a while, but I think I figured it out. At number two, I'm putting The Conjuring 2. I like how it expanded upon and explored Ed and Lorraine's characters more. And not to mention, I love how much bigger it got in terms of scares. It's packed full with some very good and creative ones. And there's some really cool sequences here and some excellent camera work. Not to mention a really nice blend of practical and special effects. Overall, it was a great follow up to the previous and I can't recommend it enough. And finally, at number one, I got The Conjuring. And the reason I have it at number one is not only is it a well-made film, I also think it's the scariest amongst them all. The scares are very creative and very effective. And I'll recommend this movie to anybody. I don't care what the fuck we're talking about, I'll bring it up somehow. I think this is James Wan's magnum opus haunted house film. It's like he dabbled in the paranormal with Dead Silence, tested the waters with Insidious, and then finally had it all come together with The Conjuring. And of course, there is some bias here because this was the film that made me go like, I fucking love this guy. And it's when I really started closely following his career. So yeah, The Conjuring one, I think is the best Conjuring film. And so to wrap it all up, I will ask the simple question that's in the title. How bad was The Conjuring Universe? Even though it's a very successful cinematic universe, raking in lots of money and getting lots of attention, nearly half the movies in it aren't really that good, and a few are just straight up really bad. So even though it's a very big financial hit, the actual quality of several of these films aren't that great. Honestly, there's only three of them that I will actually recommend to people to check out, and those are the ones that are in my top three that I just listed. The rest I really can't recommend to many people, because I'm more than certain that they won't enjoy it. So in conclusion, The Conjuring Universe is very successful, but when you look at it as a whole, it's not 
not really that good. You got a few really good ones, a few decent ones, and several bad ones. As of right now, The Conjuring 3 is the last film, but I'm more certain they have some more planned. So now what I want you to do is go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know how would you rank The Conjuring Universe films. Which ones are your favorites and which ones are just the worst? Leave a comment and let me know. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, go and drop a like on it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. And you thought I ain't peeked that you were saying my son's name in vain. All that Jesus this, Jesus that. Nigga. Nigga, that's my son. Fuck is wrong with you? It's cool though. I ain't gonna get on you. I'm gonna let my son handle it. Jesus gonna beat this shit out you.